scene eight, the very last scene of the play. Obviously, this will be the big climactic moment. Um, you know, in your mind, what do you think is going to happen? We see the two people who are definitely destined to fight. Um, you know, we just saw them in scene seven. They are out there, and they, uh, you know, Macbeth isn't really looking for Macduff, but Macduff definitely is. And so uh, they will find each other uh, in these pages. Uh, look at what the falling action is, the resolution. Um, they discuss, you know, uh, what happened to Lady Macbeth, that type of thing. So uh, try to uh, answer all those questions. <laughs> Scene eight, uh, with that being the end of it, you know, it was a tragedy, so did it happen the way that you thought it was going to happen? Did the person get the revenge that you thought should get the revenge? I think most of us would probably say, well, yeah, since Baco is dead, sure, why not Macduff? Um, especially with Macduff's family um, finding the end that they did. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, Macbeth and Macduff find each other right off the bat. Uh, Macbeth has a couple phrases to himself. Uh, you know, why should I play the Roman fool and die on mine own sword? Whilst I see lives, the gashes do better upon them. Uh, if you had read Julius Caesar, um, that movie, a lot of the conspirators take their own lives, fall on their swords, have somebody hold them, and you run into them. So in essence, why should I commit suicide? I mean, yes, it, I'm surrounded. Why should I when there's a lot of people who the wounds would look better upon than on me? I'm not going to play the fool and kill myself. That's ridiculous. Okay, so that's his motivation. And that's why if it were a different Shakespearean story or a Roman-influenced one, it would probably be a little bit different. Um, if you've seen, you know, samurai movies, ninja movies, you know, sometimes they prefer to die an honorable death, you know, uh, take their own life, have somebody take it for them in order, instead of being captured. Okay, so that might be where this is coming from. Uh, Macduff, turn, hellhound, turn. Of all men else, I have avoided thee. Well, why did he avoid thee? Well, can you remember the witch's prophecy? Beware, Macduff. And so he says, of all men, I have avoided thee. But get thee back, my soul is too much charged with blood of thine already. What a wonderful guy. Go away, I've already killed too much of the Macduff bloodline. I'm fine, I'm, I'm not thirsty anymore. Okay, so what a, what a jerk. But what a great thing to say if you're trash talking. Okay, before the big fight. Um, uh, ba -ba -ba. I have no words, so I'm not going to talk to you. I have no words, my voice is in my sword. Thou bloodier villain than terms can give thee out. So more words than I can describe, I can't, I can't talk to you. So I'm going to let my sword, because ultimately that's what he wanted. Put this man within my sword's reach so I can take care of business. Um, Macbeth, thou loosest labor, as easy mayest thou the entrenchant air with thy keen sword and presses make me bleed. So footnote, you can as easily mark the invulnerable air with your sword as make me bleed. You can just wave your thing around. You can't hurt me. There, you can't do anything to me. Okay, there's no point in it. You know, I bear a charmed life which must not yield to one of woman born. Oh, well then I'll tell thee, Macduff was from his mother's womb untimely ripped. Nowadays we would call that what? A C-section. So he didn't come out the normal way. We consider, you know, you're born either way. Okay, but do you see how the witches played this differently and played it falsely? Macduff wasn't born the normal way. He was pulled untimely. Something must have happened. He had to come out before he could go through the regular, the regular uh, path, I guess you could say. Um, and so, uh, accursed be that tongue that tells me so, for it hath cowed my better part of man, and be these juggling fiends no more believed. So I can't believe those witches anymore. And so my downfall... The woods have marched, and now I'm facing a man not born of a woman. And so uh, it looks like I'm, I'm hosed. He goes, I will not fight with thee. All right, well then yield, coward, and live to be the show and gaze of the time. We'll have thee, as our rarer monsters are, painted upon a pole and under it. Here may you see the tyrant. So we're going to make you a circus. We're going to lead you in front of everybody and say, here is the tyrant. I will not do that. 
Okay, now he has his honor. I will not yield. I will not stop fighting. I will not yield to kiss the ground before young Malcolm's feet. Though Burnham would be come to Dunsinane, and thou opposed being of no woman born, yet I will try the last. I will keep fighting until I am killed, if I am to be killed. Even though all these things, the, the, <laughs> it looks like I'm pretty host. But I will not yield at this point. I'm going to keep fighting. Lay on Macduff and damn it be him. That first cries, hold enough. And so they fight. They fight. This, the version I saw, he was killed off stage um, because I wanted to see him come back on with a head. But he didn't. And so they kind of see his feet still on stage as, you know, as the play ends. Um, but uh, so he takes off and he decapitates the body and comes back in carrying a, you know, the head because... If we remember back from our Beowulf, you know, that would be proof that Grendel was dead, would be to have the head. Um, on 401, while that's happening, everybody's kind of, we're done fighting. We've won. We've, we've taken the castle. Everything's fine. Um, we find out Seward, his younger son, young Seward, was killed. And he finds out that he was dead. But he asks an important question. Um, had his hurts before... Had his hurts been on front, had he been wounded on the front as opposed to the back? Because if it's on the front, he was facing the, the damage, facing the fight. If it got him in the back, what was he doing? Don't hurt me. Right? Running away. He didn't have a warrior's death if it was on the back. And so he's like, he had a warrior's death. I'm very proud. It was on the front. Um, why then God's soldier be he? So I lost a son, but I know that God has a really good soldier up there now. Um, so these characters, that the Seward and his dad, really not you know, important. We, you know, barely were they even present in this piece, but yet we have a nice little moment there um, really to kind of just be a buffer before we see Macduff walk in, you know, give him enough time that he could realistically <coughs> sever a head. Um, and so he walks on on 402, and he comes on pronouncing, Hail, King, for so thou art, behold, where stands the usurper's cursed head. And then everybody, Hail, King of Scotland. And then Malcolm wraps it up with the monologue, just like at the very end of Julius Caesar, the new ruler, he gets to kind of wrap it all up in summation. Um, he says a couple interesting things in here. Um, around line 63, 64, My thanes and kinsmen, Henceforth will be earls, the first that ever Scotland in such an honor named. Earls, that's an English nobility. Can we think of why he would add a noble rank of English to their titles? Well, for King James maybe a little bit, but the English helped him in the fighting. Seward and Prince Edward gave them 10,000. They could not have defeated Macbeth without them, more than likely, okay? And so this is a nice little shout out, a combination of the English and, and the Scottish, okay, with the noble ranks. Yes, I think it is in conjunction with, since James I is the king in real life, okay, that this is kind of a, a little shout out, a combination of the two kingdoms, the United Kingdoms. And so it's, I think it's a, a, a very noble thing and, and wise thing that Malcolm did there. Um, Let's see, ding, ding. you know, call, let's call home our exiled friends abroad that fled the snares of watchful tyranny, producing forth the cruel ministers of this dead butcher. So let's, hopefully those that fled, mainly my brother Donald Bain, hopefully everybody that took off can come back and we can have a good, uh, good kingdom. The rightful king is now here. Um, you know, uh, they mention his fiend-like queen who as tis thought by self and violent hands took off her life. So she killed herself. It doesn't say how. Okay. Back in Julius Caesar, Brutus's wife, she swallows hot coals from the fire because she was so tormented that her husband was exiled and it's been three years and she didn't get to see him. And so she went nuts and could, didn't see a reason for living. So she took, you know, those hot coals and swallowed them. Wow. That's a painful way to go. And so I don't know how she did, but she killed herself as well. As well. And we have the two main characters, Macbeth and Macbeth, tragically, you know, die. And we see their evolution or de-evolution throughout the whole piece. 
Um, and that's ultimately uh, what is tragic. And the very last line, uh, we're going to, uh, uh, whom we invite to see us crowned at Schoon. So remember, that was the place Macbeth was going to get crowned. So Malcolm has been restored. He's going to go and be crowned. And everything is great. It's, the, it's a happy ending, I guess, as happy as it could be for the survivors, those that truly wanted Scotland to be what it was. Okay? Um, I'd like for us to take a quick jump back uh, to the witches with their apparitions. Uh, for one. Three seventy three. When they say beware, beware Macduff, what apparition <coughs> told him to beware of Macduff? An armored head floating. You see how that kind of plays out? Macduff took Macbeth's head. Look at the second one. A bloody child is the one that said, you know, you shall not be harmed by anyone born of a woman. Okay, so the bloody child being ripped out of the mom. This, well, not like ripped, but cut and pulled out, right? Um, probably a little bit more laborious than the just pulling out. Um, but ultimately the third, how about this one? A crowned child with a, a stick in his hand. With a tree, what do they use? Uh, with a tree in his hand. Remember, who is the crowned child? Malcolm. He should be the king. Okay, he was the Prince of Cumberland, so he is a crowned child carrying a little tree. And ultimately, what did Burnham Wood do? March across. And so this little kid with a tree. Okay? So even though um, you know, they told him through words that he should be confident and such, the, the visions were not lying. They weren't being deceitful at all. There was no equivocation in the, in the visuals. This is what's going to happen. And just in case you're not good with listening, here's a, you know, here are the pictures and such. Um, so I always like to come back to this page because we're like, oh, man, they were pretty obvious with it. But yet the goal was and the enchantment of their words was such that they were going to, he was going to shirk, uh, you know, mankind. And when he should be worried and fearful, he's going to be, you know, arrogant and, and go from there. Um, so that's the end. That's Macbeth. Um, we're, we're done with it. it. It didn't take too long to get through.